Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Magda and as I said, we're gonna go back to some different topics with the new year. So if you're new here, I usually talk about Luxembourg and living here and expenses and salaries, but we're going back to topics that I started this channel with, so studying abroad, living abroad, and maybe right now, studying. So today we're gonna talk about thesis. How to find a topic for your thesis, and I think it starts to be a thesis season. I know that people still don't panic, so I don't expect this video to blow at the beginning, but I'm pretty sure around April, May this video will bloom uh, because people will start to panic. So probably more or less now, or you just push your deadline from the last year, you have to find the topic of your thesis. And I didn't know that it was ever a concern until I went to Italy and I saw how many people don't know how to do the thesis, don't know how to do the topic, and I'm sure there's tons of people around. Somehow at my university, people who were with my supervisor, they kind of knew what to write about, so nobody was super lost. But I realized that it's a big thing and I didn't have an issue, so I decided to share a bit about it with you. So first thing that you should do, at least in my opinion, is check out what do you like from your studies? What area do you like? So for example, I studied finance and accounting on my on my bus on my bachelor and I did economics and finance on my master's. Funny enough, both of my theses I wrote from the topics that were not the most uh, like liked by me, but they seemed to be interesting. So on my bachelor, I wrote the thesis about the financial statement comparison of two different airline companies. And it was mainly because I said I like to analyze data. So for example, I like to analyze data. What can I analyze? What will be good for me? Then on my master, I did a comparison of different uh, crises because it was during the crisis, you can imagine. Which one. And it was from statistics. First one was from accounting. So statistics, again, not my favorite thing. But looking at now I am working with statistics, maybe it was meant to be. I've learned a lot during both theses that I didn't do at university. And it's kind of like an additional part that I really also recommend you to do. It's do something that not clearly was explained on your studies, but something that you want to deep into. So something that you started or you have tools to do, but you're not aware of, like you don't know the topic super well. Because this helped me at least to find the jobs, to have something additional to tell on the interview. So I really recommend you to do it uh, this way, like I did unknowingly. Huh? Back then, I didn't know that it's going to affect my future life that much. So yeah, first of all, try to figure out what do you like? And it seems very obvious, but some people need to hear it. So if you're one of them, don't worry. Just try to figure out which part you like or which part you would like to focus on. Then again, you have still nothing, no topics, no ideas, what you want to do? Go to your supervisor. You probably chose your supervisor based on something or you are about to choose your supervisor. So choose a supervisor that you just like. Choose someone that you like and tell them, look, I have no clue what to write about. Can you please help me? Can you give me some topics? Some supervisors are super nice and they give you the list of topics and you can choose and it's easy peasy. Some supervisors will be, no, figure it out yourself. If you're in a situation that they didn't give you the list of topics or you don't like anything from the list of topics, we move to the next point, which is ask people around. And these people are people from your year, people from the previous year that are all over. Uh, that have already passed the thesis. Uh, maybe you're on a bachelor and you can ask people who are on the master, what did they do, which supervisor they had. Somehow there's always a communication at the university. So use it this way that you're gonna know what you can write about, what topics or supervisors will be good, and maybe they will give you an idea. If it's still nothing, you still have zero clue what to write about, Google. Google is your friend for all your topic situation. Chat GPT, Google, whatever you wanna use, put the name of your major and topic for the thesis. You will find something. Maybe this is something that you haven't seen. And what I really like to highlight is you really don't have to be inventive until you're doing it because you want to go for a PhD. But if you're going for a PhD, you shouldn't have issues to find a thesis topic. Eh? Just FYI, if you have a problem to write a thesis and you want to do PhD, you will have a problem to write the publications and articles. So think it through <laughs> if you want to do your PhD if you have issues with writing or finding the topics for writing because your life will be much more difficult after. If you're doing it just purely to pass and your thesis will be just lying down in the archives of your university, which most of our thesis will, please ask Google, pick the topic that you like and don't be super difficult on you. Like don't pick the difficult topic, just pick something that will be easy, you will pass and it will be all fine. Like most of the times, good written thesis with a 
very simple topic will be better than the thesis that is wrongly written with the most interesting topic and you did something inventive, at least from my experience again. Maybe your university is different than adapted to your university. But as I said, don't come up with some crazy ideas of what to do because you will just struggle for later. So next thing that is very important when picking up your topic is once you already have a topic, and I assume after Googling and after all these steps that you, I told you, you should have a topic, really. If you don't, I don't know how to help you. You should check if this topic makes sense for you. If you have a data, if you can do it again, why my topic for thesis for bachelor was financial statements analysis, because they are public documents. Every single big company has to publish financial statements yearly, you have historical data and you have everything given to you like this on a hand so you can analyze them easily. Second topic, it was a different crisis. I was comparing the changes on the market for indices for G7, meaning I just needed seven indices from different countries, uh, from G7 countries. And uh, prices are daily given to you public information. So this is like super important that you have public information. If it's not public, it's available at your university because maybe it's on Bloomberg, maybe it's on Reuters, maybe it's a book, maybe it's something that you can get somewhere. It depends what you're studying. Again, I'm talking a lot about business school, economics, finance, because that's what I studied. But if you did something about art or about books or I don't know, law, you still need something that will be public, you know, something that will be accessible for you or someone can give you the book or you can buy it or something. You have to have the source. You cannot go with something that will be impossible to find. The same if you ever do like data stuff, check out if the data matches. So the things that you want to compare have, for example, daily data or if they are monthly or weekly or quarterly. If you want to compare daily to quarterly, you already have an issue. If you want to uh, compare different currencies, that's not an issue. You just download also currencies, but just see if it makes sense. For example, a lot of people decided to do thesis on ESG, which is still a known topic. Like I work in a <laughs> fund in Luxembourg and we have issues with ESG. Nobody still know what exactly how to do it. CSSF, which is a regulator in Luxembourg, pushes everyone to have something on ESG, but still nobody has a clue. They're supposed to be experts on ESG, but still so many people have issues with it. Me, personally, not working strictly with ESG, I have issue with it. So why a student shouldn't have an issue? Like, you know, just look, again, make your life easier. Just pick up the stuff that you'll have a data for, that you will be downloading, it will be there in Excel, or you will have a book that you can write about, or you, like, analyze, or you will have a painting, or whatever you're doing, just have something that you're going to be able to grab. If you're not doing stuff based on this and you want to do some type of survey, go for it. But again, check out if you're going to have a wide range of people because you cannot have just students for your survey. You need adult, like elder, no, maybe not elders, but like you need people in different ranges of age. So you need teenagers, you need students, you need non-students, but young people, young adults, normal adults, old adults maybe elders, you need to do the survey that is going to have some type of range and it's going to have X amount of people so the results will be relevant. So be sure that whatever you're going to choose is going to make sense. And please don't write the thesis and then think, what is my data? Because you just lost tons of time. And my supervisor told us in the first meeting to do it this way, but maybe your supervisor won't say it or you don't have a supervisor and you need a topic before you're going to pick the supervisor, then please focus on data or whatever you're going to analyze, whatever you're going to talk about, be sure that you have it, that it's accessible, that it's going to be easy to find and really don't make your life harder. So if you chose the topic and you realize that there is no data, go back to point number one and again, try to find a topic that you will have a data. So I hope this video clarifies a bit how to find a topic for your thesis. Really don't be inventive. Really, really, really. I don't recommend you unless it's something that you want to do a research of your life or you have huge knowledge about it and you're very passionate about it. Good for you. I'm pretty sure you're not on my video now, but good for you. I was definitely not so passionate about finance to, you know, do an inventive topic of I don't know what. I did relatively inventive thesis on, uh, in 2021 because it was recent situation. So I analyzed the recent prices with 
older crisis. So it was something, let's say, fresh-ish. But my Bachelor of Jesus was definitely nothing fresh. It was just a very, I don't want to call it basic analysis because in the end I analyzed a lot. My thesis was like 80 pages. <laughs> my Master thesis was actually shorter than my Bachelor of Jesus. But yeah, it was a lot of calculations, a lot of information that I used. Uh, use on my masters I use now uh, if I can and um, and yeah it gave me analytical skills so I really appreciate that I did it very randomly as I said very randomly but if you don't have data your thesis will not happen not happen so be sure you have the data let me know if that helped you if it clarified anything for you don't panic it will be all good you still have time uh, you will write it thesis can be written in two weeks if it's less than two weeks I would question <laughs> if it's possible to write it. Both of my thesis I wrote over a long time, but they could have been written really in two weeks, just like sitting down and writing them. And I know people who did it, so you can do it as well. Don't worry. And if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. If you like the video, I would be very happy if you hit the like button. That helps me a lot, so this video will reach more people. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel. As I said earlier, normally I talk a lot about Luxembourg, studying abroad, living abroad, but now I will go back a little bit to studies because I want to share my wise knowledge of people who already studied and started working, how it works. So yeah, so if you enjoy this type of topics and you don't want to miss any of my future videos, subscribe to my channel and here I'll be the video about differences between Polish and Italian university and the studying abroad playlist. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, and I'll see you in another video.